Hey, good morning. Welcome to Coffee and Cosmos with Robin. It's Robin Fritz, and today we're talking about celebrating our animals, our animal families, and what that means in body, mind, and spirit. So, uh, <laughs> trying to show my cat here on her third birthday. And um, just happens to be that today, February 10th, is my cat's third birthday. And it brought up some ideas that I'd like to share with all of you on celebrating life, celebrating our human animal bond, our multi species families, and what that means for us and for our own soul growth. And so I'd love it if you joined in today. Let me know where you're chiming in from. And if you have an animal, you're welcome to share the the species and name and um, let's get started. So welcome to Coffee and Cosmos with Robin. My name is Robin Fritz. I'm an intuitive and spiritual consultant and certified past life regression specialist based in Seattle, Washington. And each week I come here in Humanity Healing to share a subject, to talk about things that are important to all of us and to invite you to share your thoughts and feelings about the topic of the day. And uh, normally um, we do a grounding and balancing um, exercise with Fallon, the Citrine Lemurian Quartz, but today I just wanted to jump into the subject and talk about celebrating our animal families and what that means to us and what it means to them and really what it means to soul growth all over the planet and it's a really important subject for us and we don't often think about it in terms of our family so let's get started again hi Samantha thanks for chiming in so just chime in let me know where you're coming from and if you live with animals and what their names might be so today is my Russian blue cat Karis's third birthday and as I thought about a topic today I thought you know I can't get out of my head a woman I met on the beach um, near where I live some years ago uh, walking my two dogs was winter time and the dogs had jackets on and the woman just had an absolute fit she started yelling at me how I was spoiling my dogs and they didn't need jackets and what was I thinking and <laughs> and the reason I think I thought about it in relationship to my cat is that it was a demonstration of how we're not literally growing in our souls in our planet connection planetary connections even maybe into how we've come to the planet and what we're sharing with each other and so when we think about our animal families I think back over the many years with dogs and the fewer years with cats because honestly I didn't get a cat until my dogs made me go out and get a cat I had just met so here's the thing we have as humans lived with animals for eons and way back when it was ancient necessity it was coming together to survive together to hunt down food to kill rats um, whatever over time um, we became partners in life and as you know from like the number of dog breeds that have been created. Um, civilization really got started by us so-called domesticating animals. But when we talk today about celebrating our animals, celebrating our bond with them, it goes deeper. It goes to what I call heart and soul growth. And I think those of you, whether you, those of you who have animals will understand that. But even if you don't live with animals, either because that isn't something that appeals to you, which is totally fine, or you can't considering your circumstances. The one thing that living with an animal or creating multi-species families can do for us is help us appreciate the diversity of the world we live in. And we humans tend to forget that. I work, as some of you who've tuned into previous broadcasts know, 
I work with the planet. I work with weather and land systems. I actually talk with them. Whether it's a tree, a hurricane, the ocean outside where I live. And working with non-humans and realizing that everything on the planet has a soul, has consciousness, has a job to do, a choice to do that job, has really a responsibility to make a choice and definitely has opinions. <laughs> when we start talking and conversing or however intuition works, using our intuitive abilities to connect with all life, we realize that we humans are part of an entire planet where everything is equal to each other. Now, when we start to think about that, like how hard is it to really create peace on earth, so to speak, when we start looking at other beings as equal to us, as we, we start interacting with them as beings that have feelings, that have needs and desires, and have jobs to do. And I think that's where our growth in our relationship with our animal families has taken us in this modern age, where we can celebrate our cat's third birthday and I tried to show you her briefly, she's off exploring the house again, um, where we can celebrate a birthday of an animal family member and make it as relevant as our own or as any other family member. And what that means to us in body, mind, and spirit. So when we think about our animal families, um, what do you have? Let's take a quick look here. Samantha lives in Maine and has four cats, Mittens, Gordon, Patches, and Soldier, and a dog, Car Carmel? 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 Cool. Hi, Julia. Thanks for chiming in. Samantha, thanks for sharing that. It is awesome that people um, share their family members. Now, years and years ago, um, I started realizing something else about our animal families, and that's that they reincarnate with us, which is kind of cool, really, because those of you who live with animals know their lives are inevitably shorter than ours. But what is surprising in that is that this is really the last few hundred years or the first time that we have forgotten that our animals reincarnate with us and people wonder what does that mean and what I've discovered in my work as an intuitive as an animal communicator as a healer is that our animals have joined us again in our families they're part of our soul families and soul families don't need to take a particular body in order to be a member of our soul family they just need to be with us. And when we're lucky and we lose them and they reincarnate with us, that's a great joy. It doesn't always happen, but the point of it is that now that we're recognizing this again and people tell me their stories of recognizing their lost animal in a new body, we're starting to once again tap into the reality of how magnificent our universe really is and how much we've forgotten about it and how much we can continue to learn from it by opening up and being together with other species. And that's one of the things that I value the most about my family. It is a multi-species family. I currently have one dog, a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, Oliver Alki, who is the multi-times reincarnated soul that keeps coming to me in a dog body, and my current cat, Karis, who reincarnated and came back to join my family, even though I didn't know she was going to do that, and she told me she wasn't. So when we look at that, whether they reincarnate with us, with us at all, when we look at living with them, how does that affect you, mind, body, and spirit? How do you look at that, and what does that mean to you in checking out the planet that we live on and trying to make our own contribution to it? Now, as I said many times in previous broadcasts, we all come as souls and choose a body in a particular incarnation because we think that's the body we need 
to grow our soul for the job we chose in that body to grow our soul in that incarnation. And if we think that the humans are at the top of the food chain, we're not really paying attention to the jobs our animals have chosen. My animals have introduced me to things I didn't even know existed in the world and really opened my eyes to how diverse our, our planet is and how so many other beings are making this contribution to grow, to come together to recognize that different souls can take different bodies and we can all make this contribution to our living, conscious, aware planet. And that's amazing. So I just want to leave you with a few tips today on uh, mind, body, and spirit in our animal families. And welcome your comments on what you notice um, from your families, how you've learned from them, and what that means to you. So if you're looking at body, mind, and spirit in connection with our animal families, um, first of all, I... I hope when I shared the story of the woman who was very angry and that I had put jackets on my dogs to protect them from the rain, um, that we can all grow beyond that limited mindset that thinks spoiling an animal or spoiling anyone is somehow what's going on instead of being respectful of their needs, right? So you're going to put a jacket on yourself, why not put a jacket on your dog? And when we're talking about body, mind, and spirit for animal families and what they're up to in their individual bodies, um, we can recognize that we love them as much as we would love any family member, human or otherwise. But one of the things a lot of people forget in our new mind, body, spirit relationship, our new soul connection with animals as families is that they are first and foremost animals. So they do have needs within those animal bodies and we need to pay attention to those needs and serve them. From pro proper medical care to just paying attention to what they need, which is why um, I pay attention to my indoor cat. Uh, I have activities for her, climbing tree, climbing pose, all kinds of ways for her to connect with the outside world without the danger of actually going in it, which is how I discovered that my neighbor next door was uh, had put up a hummingbird feeder and we had a, a lot of hummingbirds outside one particular window um, taking advantage of a hummingbird feeder. But recognizing that these animals have needs for their particular species reminds us to help our dogs get exercise, to feed them properly, to entertain them, to make sure that they're emotionally and mentally stimulated so they get the exercise they need, so they get the intellectual and physical stimulation that they need to continue to be healthy and to be happy. Um, we forget that evolution takes longer than 20 minutes. <laughs> we have to provide them with a nourishment that we would want to be provided with if someone was taking care of us on, on their terms, which is really what we're doing. Taking care of animals on the terms that humans have created because, again, um, creating a family uh, involves bringing everyone into the home and seeing what they're up to. And my cat behind me right now is up to <laughs> reminding me that she wants to play and has brought a toy to play with. So that's a body thing to think about. But what about mind? What about mind in relation to our animal families? What are their intellectual and emotional needs, right? And how do we balance their needs with ours? We talked about intellectual and physical stimulation to uh, to have them uh, be happy in their in their relationship with us and to to be to lead fulfilling lives and um, for example one time I was taking my dog for a walk and we were walking down the street and I, I live at the beach here in Seattle Washington and I'm off and the dog my dog and I Ollie and I are looking at each other occasionally like oh yeah did you notice that 
And then there was another time when I looked out and I was enjoying watching a bald eagle down on the beach and I looked down to Ollie to kind of point it out to him. <laughs> he noticed the bald eagle, right? He was fascinated with a cat walking on a leash across the street. So this is our opportunity to interact with our animals and notice what they're noticing. And I can tell you I've seen the insides of a lot of spring flowers by watching my dogs explore flowers on our walks. Not eating them or disturbing them, but just taking a peek inside and seeing what's going on in there. So we're looking for body and mind, for stimulating them, for paying attention to what interests them, to finding ways to encourage them, but also looking at what they need spiritually. What does their spirit need and how can we help them with that? And how can we give them space to nurture their own spiritual needs? And um, if you've listened to broadcasts before or joined me, you know that I am adamantly opposed to people looking at animals as gurus and teachers. Yes, we do learn things from animals and they learn things from us. And we learn particularly within the family environment. So we learn from each other. But animals are, again, souls that have chosen that animal body to do that particular work that it needs in that lifetime to keep growing its soul. And they're not less or greater than us, they are equal to us. But the job some of these animals have chosen, they're amazing. And when I started realizing that one of my animals was an ambassador to the Dragon Kingdom, and I didn't even know dragons were real, <laughs> and other animals were doing other things, I realized that there was more going on in the world than we knew and I started investigating that and what I discovered was there are many very important jobs that animals are doing in the world related to the growth of the world, the spiritual development if you will of the world are increasing alignment with soul purpose um, that they simply couldn't do in human bodies because we humans are are ego oriented and we're analytical and we're not opening up always to what's going on around us. So when you're looking at the spiritual needs of your animal family members, think about what they may have come here to do within that body and how you can support them by helping them stay healthy. And if you can communicate with them, find out what it is that else they need from you to be able to do their jobs. My animals needed me to just be there to present, uh, to give them healthy circumstances, but they also needed my support as a family member and as an intuitive to assist them in their work, which is literally to give them space to do that work in and know that they were perfectly capable of doing it. But when we're all together, body, mind, and spirit, within our multi-species families, what we're doing on a spirit sense is literally coming together as families and being there to support each other, to build each other up, to give each other space to grow within that family environment. And that's an amazing thing that you can do for your families. And I encourage you to stop and take a look at the animals that you may be living with or animals of family members and you know ask yourself how can I support them body mind and spirit how can I give them the space they need what it, do are they uncertain about something do do they need somebody to confide in and find out what it is that they came to do and how you might be able to assist them to do that it's it's a remarkable thing and um, that brings up kind of the last point I want to make, which is that we don't always know even what our own souls are here for, what we're here to do. We do know that sharing love, that connecting with each other, that paying attention to body, mind, and spirit will help us grow and creating that atmosphere will help our family members grow, whether they're human or animal. But being able to make that contribution, to look at an animal family member as a conscious being with 
ideas, with a job to do, with a sense of humor, with all kinds of things, helps us realize that it can't really be that hard to create a peaceful world, right? To connect with other humans and figure out what our differences are so that we can come together and make it a place where all other beings can survive, other humans, animals, trees, the planet itself. So I want to leave you with that as a thought today of how you can contribute to the development of your animal family, body, mind, and spirit. <coughs> um, yeah, wow, well, Terry, 13 rabbits, 5 dogs, and 35 cats. Yes, um, Terry's saying that this is a gut-wrenching subject for, to, for her because there's so much inhumanity to animals. You know, I'm not sure I agree that there's more now than ever before, Terry, but I think there's more knowledge of it, and because we have 24-7 media, um, and there's still people that hunt for the pleasure of hunting, that not to provide food for their families, and there is a lot of mistreatment of animals, and here is a place where we can come together and through rising up our knowledge and our understanding of animals who have as souls in bodies that are here to do a specific thing, that that can act as love as a yeasty agent, as loving, loving agent to rise up consciousness. And maybe that's one of the things that is happening as we go out and talk about the human animal bond, talk about animals as family members and spread that knowledge around that it seeps into the dark places and comes back up and helps renew. Um, but there are always going to be people who just aren't, in the, aren't at the same place that other people are and that's where example and concern for them comes in. So thanks for sharing that. Oh my gosh, you lost a lot of animals. I'm sorry, um, that Terry, that you've lost so many animals this last month. It is hard. And and bless you for having the heart that really loves and cares and acknowledges how close you were to them. And, and that's what we need, more people like you out there. So thanks for sharing that. Samantha loves her animals. And uh, I notice every day, rather, the first thing I notice every day, rather, I like it or whether I like it or not, they keep you going and make you feel needed. And that's cool, too, right? We It is helpful. Um, and they say people live longer if they have animal family members. I don't know. Um, for me, it was a conscious choice. And I know it is for a lot of you. So enjoy them. You know, I have a ritual every day in the morning. Hey, good morning kids. How are you? What are we up to today? What What's your job going to be today? And at night it was like, okay, what were we planning to do today? What did we get done? What are we going to carry over to tomorrow? And really, you know, trying to listen to their response, trying to find out what they're up to. So that's pretty cool too, right? And, uh, and you have toddlers and a senior sitter, senior center, um, Sorry, fading out here. Um, yes, I'm glad that you communicate with your animal family members. And um, that's awesome, Terry. And you know, um, I work as an animal communicator, but I didn't start out that way. And I didn't start out to be an intuitive and spiritual consultant. And actually, um, while I had these abilities as a child, as we all do, um, one of the things that helped me grow in my work was to recognize that my animals were doing things that, you know, were beyond what I thought anybody could do, animal or human, and really relaxing around that and enjoying them and asking when i found out my dog murphy was ambassador to the dragon kingdom because i was meeting dragons and like going okay dragons really <laughs> and i found out murphy was an ambassador to the dragon kingdom i will to my dying day be grateful that i didn't say what that's a job for an animal um i first was like wow there's a job like that 
Oh my gosh, I had no idea. Murphy, how can I help you? And I think if we look at each other, our animals, at each other as humans, going out in the world, how can we help each other to be our best? That's, that's an awesome thing. And if we learn more because we look at an animal and they can give that back to us, how much better it is. So thank you all for chiming in. Just cats are always telling you what they need. We listen. That is awesome. And I'm glad more people like you out there. And Julia, um, Ping Ping Pug has been mad at her for taking a trip. Oh, yeah. They get upset and they get um, upset because we leave them behind. I had a dog once who crawled in my suitcase when I was getting ready to leave. Um, that's one reason why I keep a bottle of rescue remedy around and treat everyone with a little bit of rescue remedy helps soothe the energies and um and just saying i'm sorry but i can't take you with me and let's pick a job for you to do while i'm gone and you know when we have animals in the house especially animals that that were bred to have jobs whether to bark or to herd invite them to have a job right invite them to go like hey, okay what's your job going to be today What's your job going to be while I'm gone? How are you going to count the time while I'm gone? What are you going to do? How are you going to be? Are you going to cooperate with the babysitter? All kinds of things. So thank you for shining uh, your light um, onto this conversation and um, for joining me on my cat's third birthday. Um, you know, it's it's an amazing journey that we share together, and it never ceases to amaze me how much I can learn from just taking a walk in the neighborhood and finding out what a tree is up to. And so, in closing today, I want to urge you to pay attention to nature, right? Nature is soothing, and I'm both amused and delighted at people talking about things like forest bathing and so on. It's like, it seems like a natural thing to me that, that why do people have to be taught to go out and spend time in a forest or to look at their animals as family members? Because we're all learning and growing together, right? We're all learning different things at different times. And here, right here, Humanity Healing is a place to share what we learn, to share how we learn something and to grow together. An idea that one of you have shared today that I may have shared may spark somebody else's discovery of some amazing thing that their animals are up to or an insight into how together we can contribute to the welfare of our healthy planet. And so I wish you the very best on that. And for Crystal of the Week to support you and your animal families, I will point you towards Rose Quartz. Um, roses quartz is pink and I have this like constitutional issue with pink so ignore me on that but rose quartz is really this very gentle energy and a lot of our animals need that gentle energy you know we're asking an awful lot of them to live with us in our homes at a time when we have advanced so far with technology and how busy we are that it's actually too much for our own human bodies. So imagine asking animals to make this rapid evolutionary jump to living with us as family members and not having all of those jobs that they used to do when we needed each other to survive. So think about things that we can do to stimulate our animal family members to support them through their lives. And rose quartz is one of those things that can do that. And you can keep it near them or you can find a way to attach a piece of it to their color. And it's a very gentle crystal and very soothing and very supportive. So it helps them ground and get balance and really to shine forth in the world. Now, one thing that I want to share with you in closing is um, just like any other crystal, be careful of the crystals you put around animals. Um, sometimes uh, a particular crystal is way too strong for that animal and or for you and can really knock you off balance or even make you feel ill. And I will talk about that at another time.
time. So if you're looking for crystals to support an animal who's anxious, who's a new family member, who's going through some physical issue, grab a piece of rose quartz that could help. And also plain clear quartz will also help. So I want to thank you all for joining me today. I'm uh, developing an online mentoring group, so you can check that out. Um, if you have a question on that, you can check out my, pa my Facebook page, The Practical Intuitive. And um, let me know if you're interested. It'll be a monthly gathering. And um, I'll be back here every Monday to talk about a new subject. So if there's something that you'd like me to cover, let me know. But thanks for joining me now. Grounding and balancing. Put your hands on your heart. Breathe into your heart. Feel healthy energy come in. Invite that into your heart. Invite that into your family's air, so to speak the air that you breathe, the atmosphere in your home. Thank you for joining me. We'll see you next week. Take care.